Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be going over the five of the best Dota combos that exist in the current meta. So the main goal for today's video is to give you guys a pretty clear idea of what heroes you can pick in your pubs in order to have the best chance of success. Four out of the five combos that I'll be giving you guys here today are a support plus core, and so what I recommend you look to do in your pubs is, if you're a support player, pick the support hero and suggest the core hero, or if you're the core hero, look for the support pick and then pick the core. And that's how you can apply this video very practically to your pubs. The last combo of the video doesn't exactly work that way and is much harder to synergize, but I still think it's one of the best combos in the game, and so I wanted to add it to the video. But without further ado, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, as it helps us out a ton, and let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the GameLeap website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you. Because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is going to help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. All right, the first combo is one of the most popular, if not the most popular professional opener in Dota right now. And man, it is dominant in pubs as well. And that is un Dying plus Medusa or Morphling. The reason why this combo of heroes is so strong is the timings of the heroes in the laning stage. Well, there's a couple of other factors as well, which we'll get into, but I really think the main one is the laning stage. In the laning stage, Medusa and Morphling both aren't that good at level 1 or level 2. These heroes really tend to come online when they get treads or like treads wand wraith band or or treads raindrops. This is when these heroes feel good, level 3, level 4 with these items. And so Undying allows these heroes to get to those timings. Morphling just straight up isn't good at level 1, and Medusa got nerfed pretty hard at level 1 and level 2, so the hero is actually susceptible to being run at in the early levels due to the fact that mana shield no longer gives her bonus mana at level one it used to give 200 now it gives zero however with an undying in your lane it's just not going to be a problem you're in the safe lane you're a ranged hero who can sit underneath your tier one tower in the early levels and then undying is going to put in the work to zone out the enemy position four and off laner and enable you to hit your timing on top of that, Medusa and Morphling both are very good poke and chip carries, and honestly at some point, Undying is going to set them up to get a kill with one of their long range nukes, whether or not that's Adaptive Strike or Medusa's Snake. Now the other part of this combo that's really really good is the Roshan taking potential. It's really easy to have a game plan when you have Medusa Morphling with Undying, and the reason why is you're going to have probably a good safe lane, and then getting into the mid game, you're going to have a hyper carry that loves getting Aegis. Whether or not that's more for Medusa, these are two of the best Aegis carriers in the game as they don't lose a lot of value even if they die. It's not like Sven or Terrorblade or Dragonite or Chaos Knight where when you respawn you're like, oh, I don't have my Metamorphosis, my Dragon Form, my Phantasm died, whatever it is, that doesn't happen with these heroes. And so you get the Aegis and you can put very, very significant map pressure by taking all the tier 2s or taking a tier 2 and going high ground depending on the enemy heroes. It's just a very easy game plan. And that's why I'm such a big fan of this combo and it's number 1 on the list. Getting into the second combo is more of an explosive combo between the position 4, sometimes position 5, but primarily position 4 role and the mid lane role. And this combination of heroes is Skywrath Mage plus Ember Spirit or Skywrath Mage plus Primal Beast. The reason why I like these combos is because of the fact that I'm a big fan of Skywrath Mage in general. I think this hero matches up very well against Undying and a lot of the other position 5s. It tends to trade very very well and allow a lot of the very popular melee offlaners, Darkseer, Doom, Legion Commander, Axe, all to have a very good laning stage. Then when it enables heroes like Tide, Axe, Legion, you know, Doom, etc. to get off to a good start and either buy their phase boots, Vanguard, whatever it is, and be able to be left alone when they can be left alone, right? Because Skyrath gets them off to a good start, then they can be left alone, Skyrath heads mid, and he synergizes his Ancient Seal with some sort of control from either Primal or Ember, and the damage is overwhelming. So really what I like about this combination of heroes is not only the fact that the heroes have innate synergy, where you have Pulverize with Mystic Flare, Skyrath Mage's ulti, Searing Chains with Mystic Flare, that's also a good combo and makes a lot of sense, 
even though this would seem to be the main and honestly only reason, I really think it comes down to map play, right? As I said, you help your offlaner get off to a good start, and they have such a good game in a lot of cases uh, where you can leave them alone and just start to play with your, your very active mid. And these mid laners, this Primal Beast and this Ember Hero, they really can kill people fast with a plus one. Without that plus one, whoever they're going on is just going to get off, well, whatever their defensive abilities are. Primal Beast has a very hard time killing, honestly, a large portion of the support cast, due to the fact that he has to take, you know, quite a bit of time to kill people. He has to go melee range, and that allows them to get their spells off. With Skyrath, it's not even a question. They're going to die. The silence amps the magic damage, and they get exploded. And actually, that was the reason why when I was making this video, I put Primal and Sky as the only combo here, then I added Ember, because I'm like, yeah, Ember's a very good mid-hero. Makes a lot of sense. It's a popular combo. Similar idea, maybe you don't play Primal Beast. A lot of mid lane players don't, uh, even though I think they should. The hero got buffed a lot. The next combo we're gonna talk about is Io Leshrac with Darkseer. All right, I, you know, I know I'm kind of cheating a little bit. This is three heroes, but, but I just had to put this combo. I, I just think it's, uh, it's an incredibly deadly combo. So I watched this combo in a Game and Gladiators game and I was like, yeah, this makes so much sense. Here's why this combo is so broken and makes so much sense. Number one, Leshrac got buffed very hard, so the hero is actually one of the most reliable laners in Dota. Like truly, it's really, really reliable after its buffs to Lightning Storm and the radius on its Q. And then from there, honestly, Io or Darkseer, neither of these heroes are incredible laners, and so that can be the downside of this strategy. Maybe the Leshrac doesn't have any backup from his teammates because the heroes aren't off to like great starts or something of the sort. However, if you do manage to have even just decent games, let's say the game is even, there is an eventual timing that is so broken with these heroes. And that timing is Leshrac with Bloodstone, okay, that's usually around minute 14, Io with Holy Locket, which is usually around, honestly, it depends, it really depends, but let's say minute 15 to 17, and then Darkseer with Mech or Greaves. The reason why this combo and this timing is so broken is as follows. Lishrak Bloodstone makes him hard to kill, right? It heals him. When he activates it, he spell life steals like crazy. He also has a really high HP pool because Bloodstone gives you a lot of HP. Then, Io is going to be healing the Leshrac that is already hard to kill. The Io also gives Leshrac spell amp, which in turn increases the amount of spell life steal that Leshrac gets from Bloodstone, right? That's from the overcharge. On top of that, Io increases Leshrac's movement speed, which is really nice, right? Io increases it and then matches it. So Leshrac, a very fast hero, gets a huge benefit from the tether. Then, with the Holy Locket, you can heal your Yourself, which in turn heals the Lash even more. But most importantly, and the main thing to understand, is that with Darkseer buying mech, which is the main hero he tends to buy anyways, he heals the Leshrac with the mech, 275 health, and then he heals the Io with the mech, and that also heals the Leshrac. And if Io has Holy Locket, it is an insane amount of amp. Leshrac gets healed for around 600 health from one click of mech. And then with Holy Locket, he's getting healed by another around four to 500. And so you could see where the problem arises for the enemy team. You just don't have enough damage to kill a Leshrac with effectively 3,000 health. And I say effectively 3,000, but more realistically with a Bloodstone heal, it's like 4,000. <laughs> and so, yeah, you have to come up with 4,000 damage, which some team comps can do. And of course, the counter to this is indeed Spirit Vessel, but honestly in the current meta, a lot of heroes don't want to buy it, and they might not even get it in time, right? It just depends. And so once again, it creates a big problem where the enemy team just isn't ready. And finally, the last thing that I really love about this, even though you might be thinking, oh, it's, it's the vacuum into split earth combination. I can hit a five man vacuum with my level 15, 100 vacuum AOE talent, and then Lashrak's gonna follow it up with the stun and Leshrac's gonna have his shard and then it's gonna stun them again. But no, that's, you know, even though I actually do believe that Vacuum Split Earth is a fine and honestly quite legit combo. And the reason why it's actually a legit combo is the enemy team is going to surround and try to burst the Lash. That's usually what happens. It's very easy to vacuum and actually synergize it with Split Earth when the enemy team is extending like that. So it is very practical in that regard and that is nice. Right? But that's actually not the main reason I love this combo. It's Surge. Surge on Leshrac is incredible, because the main way to deal with this hero is to kite him. 
His spells are very low range, and so inherently, kiting him is the way to go. And so with Surge, that's just not an option. But what's particularly amazing about Surge on Leshrac is the fact that it works on Io too. Io matches the movement speed of whoever he's tethered to, and so if Darkseer surges the Leshrac, it also surges Io. Neither of them can be slowed, and so it's really hard to burst the Io, which is actually the best way, on average, to deal with Io Leshrac. Getting into the fourth combo, we have Storm Pugna. I will spend very little time on this combo because, frankly, there's not too much to say. Basically, Storm is a hero that doesn't lose a lot of mid matchups, and so you can pick it early on and expect it to do well, and if, even if it doesn't do well, it can recover in the jungle. And it can recover in the jungle so quick because Pugna gives you infinite mana. Pugna also tends to do well in the side lanes, so, you know, he can, kind of similar to the Skywrath, which is why these heroes are both popular, it can give your side laner a good start and then leave them alone and play with the mid laner, right? And that's actually a big part of the meta of the pro scene, but it works in pubs too, right? You pick your Pugna, you pick your Storm, Pugna wins his safe lane. If you don't, well, you got bigger problems because Nether Blast and Nether Ward are incredibly good abilities and your base stats are really, really good. So yeah, you, you really, you're, you're probably messing something up. Then you go play with the storm, you make stacks for him, you enable his game, you suck him, you give him mana, he goes and kills someone, you give him more mana, he farms the wave, farms some stacks, you give him more mana, and that's about it. All right, and finally, the last combo, which is not support plus core, is Doom plus a carry that delays the game. So what I mean by this is Doom is one of the best scaling heroes in the game. And honestly, I think you could argue that he is, at least like, on average, right? On average, Doom is maybe the best scaling hero in the game because with Aghanim Scepter, you can kind of counter almost anything, right? Aghanim Scepter plus an Olifier from a teammate counters almost everything in a lot of games, right? Like, it, there's very few answers. And so there is that, right? That's something to keep in mind. This hero is just incredibly good at scaling. And so what do I mean by Doom plus delay the game carry? What I mean by that is picking a carry that either wins its lane really hard or a carry that has uh, some way to push in lanes safely. So this actually can apply to most carry heroes, but as an example, I'm not a huge fan of like Doom plus Drow because I don't think Drow is that good at winning her lane unless she's with like Undying. I don't think Drow is good at pushing out lanes and so she's not really good at enabling Doom in, in really much of a way. Drow is a timing carry. She's a carry that wants to get her Hurricane Pike, she wants to get her Manta, she wants to take Roche with the help of something like an Undying and then snowball the game from there. And can that work with Doom? Yeah, sure, because Doom can buy auras and you can group up with a pipe and you're undying in your drought, take Roche and play fast. And that's fine, and that's a totally legit strategy. However, I think it's more reliable to have a hero like Morphling or my favorite, Terror Blade, to be able to do well in the lane, as these heroes are pretty good laners, and then be able to use Mantas, or, you know, in Terror Blade's case, Contra Image, to clear waves and take dangerous farm. By clearing creep waves, you're going to naturally delay the game because the enemy is going to take time where they would normally be killing you or taking towers, dealing with Terror Blade illusions that are cutting their creep waves near the tier two towers. And so it allows Doom to spend a lot of time clicking Midas, clicking Devour, and clicking Scorch Earth, just to get farm. And eventually, around minute 30 or even minute 25, he's gonna have an aura item plus blink, right, with the war stomp ability. Then he's gonna often have a, like an Octarine core to BKB, and you're just such a menace to the game. Like Doom is an absolute menace to the game, as long as his carry has a good lane. So really what I suggest here is pick Doom in the second phase when your carry is going to last pick, because if your carry is able to last pick a favorable matchup, it is very likely that you'll be able to delay the game and carry it at whatever late game point it gets to. But alright, that's going to be all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, and we're going to be doing guess the rank soon. So I'm not going to be asking for guess the rank replays in this video, but I will be doing that tomorrow, so keep your eye out for that if you're a loyal Game Leap subscriber. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm out. And that's all! But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace!